So our next patient is 33, and he's coming to your office in December with a four-day history of acute onset of fever and cough. He denies shortness of breath or polyuric chest pain. He's an otherwise healthy math teacher at a local high school. H1N1 influenza has been diagnosed in three of his students. So he comes to you with a fever of 101.5, blood pressure is okay, heart rate is 106, respiratory rate 20. He's alert and oriented, lung and heart is exam exams are normal. On labs, hemoglobin is 15, white cells are eight, so fairly normal and also a normal chest x-ray. So what would you do now? Nasopharyngeal swab for rapid antigen testing for flu, nasopharyngeal swab for PCR testing for flu, no testing, treat with oseltamivir, or no testing, no treatment. All right. And our correct answer is D. And this is a great question. Uh, we have answers kind of in between B, C, and D, so it's good to go over this. And the main issue here is this patient has influenza-like illness during influenza season with a positive contact in his classroom, actually three positive contacts. So the pretest probability is very high. And in general, it's, uh, you don't need diagnostic testing because the exposure is there, you have everything you need. So from a value-based standpoint and from a pretest probability standpoint, you don't need the test. Testing may be required for patients requiring admission to confirm their diagnosis, guide therapy, rule out other causes, and for infection prevention needs. However, this gentleman is young, healthy, doesn't need treatment, doesn't need admission, and you have a high likelihood of, um, of influenza given the exposure in the classroom. Seasonal flu is highly contagious and of course happens in winter months in North America. It's about three to 11% incidence per season. Acute fever and cough during seasonal disease has an 80% positive predictive value, which is why we didn't do the test. For testing, immunoassays were the previous test that we used and it has a 60% sensitivity, 98% specificity. For NAT testing or PCR testing, it's 90% sensitive and specific. So the, the pretest probability was higher when we used to do antigen testing than the test itself. Um, and PCR testing is better than the pretest probability, but in general, uh, just minimal and not needed, and it won't change your management in this particular patient. Now, if the patient were older, if you wanted to potentially give oseltamivir, then the testing would have clinical utility and would change your management. So who to test? Immunocompromised. Immunocompromised with the exacerbation of comorbidity, any sort of complicated infection, inpatients with acute febrile illness, respiratory disease. So essentially, people that you want to treat or people that you want to admit. So what do we use for treatment and who do we treat? So regardless of duration, so there's a 48-hour cutoff to have the maximum effectiveness. However, if the patient is hospitalized, is severe enough to be hospitalized, you want to treat either way particularly if they're getting admitted with lower respiratory tract infections and hypoxia. Um, if they're at risk for severe disease, so um, long-term care facilities, advanced age, pregnancy, significant comorbidities, all of these patients can progress to lower respiratory tract disease and you want to prevent that. So treating uh, is recommended for those patients. Now within 48 hours, it's basically people with less risk factors, but enough risk factors to be treated. So typically people um, of, of higher age and with some comorbidities, um, but not sick enough to be hospitalized. So how do you treat? Oseltamivir for five days. There are other medications like Xanamivir and Paramivir. These are typically not used um, unless there are shortages or um, other indications. Um, but in general, Oseltamivir would be your drug of choice for five days. We also have baloxavir, some of these newer drugs, uh, but in general, for your boards, also time of year will be your drug of choice. The influenza vaccine is recommended for everyone annually over the age of six months. And there's a variety of different influenza vaccines. You can use the high dose vaccine, which is primarily recommended for individuals over the age of 65, but there's inactivated, live, there's nasal, there's um, a lot of options. There's egg-free options. So if anybody has an egg allergy, there's also egg-free options. So the key points is, are to recognize influenza-like illness in the setting of an influenza epidemic, know the operating characteristics of clinical impression and the diagnostic tests, know in which clinical setting the tests are needed, 
and who to treat and what to give.